Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks and another high level match of Beyond All Reason. Today, what I've got for you is a match on the Ditch remake. Not to be confused with Erebos Leak, which is similar, has connected water points over here. This one is the Ditch remake, and it has little land bridges over there. But spawning over here on the eastern side and representing our blue team is an Armada commander. It's going to be Zekrus going for a couple of wind turbines off the back of a couple of metal extractors right here in what is very solidly considered to be the tech spot. So I'm expecting to see some high-level technical shenanigans here, a very well-managed, well well-microed economy on the back of it. Uh, I would I'd be surprised if we didn't see T2 rushed out here by Zacruz on the blue team. Now, representing the red team over here on the western side, a name we all know and love, Showing up as a Cortex Commander right on the front lines, it's going to be Mighty Sheep. Going into a vehicle bay already on the back of two solar panels and three metal extractors. Very, very stock standard. Vehicles make a whole lot of sense on big, flat, open maps like this, so it really does seem like an excellent opportunity to whip out some vehicles and see what they can do for you. Obviously very expensive, but on a map like this, when there's tons and tons of metal spots that you can, well, capture and make yours for the enjoying, yeah, it's certainly a lovely opportunity to, uh, yeah, go for some cheeky, cheeky shenanigans here. Now, uh, one of the things about the Ditch remake that I like is the fact that there's this big middle section where there's these these uh, very important metal extractors, 3.4 and 3.4, totaling 6.8 if you get both of them under your control. Not to mention these other 2.2s back here, but all of it very, very important to get your hands on. So it's one of those things that is uh, often addressed in different ways, but one of my favorite ways is just sending a transport over here to capture all this. Usually, I think it's probably this player's job, although... Maybe it could be argued that it might be uh, the, the tech player's job to manage that as well as try and get their tech transition up and running. But somebody has to, somewhere along the lines, go around and try at the very least to capture that middle island. Because it becomes very important, holding control over this, that you can fly bombers and fighters and that sort of thing through the center of the map here and uh, eventually get a little bit of damage done. Quite a long rush distance on this map. We're finally seeing the first contact over here as a uh, rover and a tick pass each other in the night. The tick winning that engagement at least and there it goes rover goes down i feel like rovers ought to have just maybe 20 percent more hp something to make them a little bit better against ticks <laughs> either way the tick right there for some old guy going to take down the metal extractors so definitely well worth it they spy the constructor as well so they're going to try and move towards that meanwhile we finally have some forces pushed out well pushed out and all over the place here we have a single rascal making its way across right now four mighty sheep Gonna find Pro Randy chilling in the back line here, chilling like a villain here as the green lime commander for the blue team. Won't last long as it finds that commander, but it will at the very least give him some sense of where the uh, one of the other top level players will be for the blue team. Getting a scout off, oftentimes the difference between an effective first bombing run and an ineffective uh, first, second, or third bombing run. Oftentimes the, the first one really leads to the second one and so on and so forth. It can be very tricky. This is unfortunate. Yeah, Mighty Sheep has found himself in a bit of a peculiar situation. Tick over here going to try and catch this metal extractor. Ooh, can the incisor save something? Oh, the incisor has tried to pull to send something. Oh, no. Yeah, the Tick is going to get two metal extractors right here. That's going to slow down Mighty Sheep quite a lot. What a bummer. Excellent control right there from Pro Randy. Sneaking the Tick in where it's most needed and managing to kill some of that infrastructure right there. Not going to be the end of the world, but it is going to slow down construction because now... Yeah, this muskrat is going to have to build two metal extractors before heading out, and I think it probably wanted to go build in the pool over here. What a pain. Oh, it's coming back. It's got two chevrons. <laughs> what a hero. Oh, no. Units were uh, not paying attention over here, and that tick is going to get another metal extractor. Oh, my goodness. The tick that stopped the world here. Mighty Sheep now crushed into uh, oblivion we can see that the red commander now on just well 14 metal per second and he's reclaiming is a little bit higher but finally that tick will be stopped a tick that went on a rampage right there beautiful a couple of incisors tried to get some damage done on the other side of the map but they're shut down by a whole lot of ticks that swarmed them and all said and done that's just going to be a whole lot of metal now lying on the back of the uh the, well, the blue team's bases over here uh there we go those simultaneously commander explosions Sounded sounded like multiple commanders exploded all at once right there. I don't think so. I think it was just this one over here. Uh, commander going down so that we can go for a T2 transition. All very stock standard here by four minutes. We are uh, basically getting ready to start this game. <laughs> 
This map is so wide and open and all far apart that it's very difficult to get your front line set up very quickly. So everybody's sort of taking their sweet time right here. Lost Dead Man moving his commander far forward here, using a transport to build these metal extractors. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Uh, probably a good idea. I mean, you're never going to be able to capture all these in a timely manner if you don't use the transport or something in order to move forward here. Lost Dead Man doing a little bit of a cheeky build. No production in the back line here, just using this uh, build tower and some constructors to go for a whole lot of wind turbines and then moving the commander forward and going for a vehicle bay here. I actually quite like it. It allows you to pump out those units a whole lot closer to the front lines, and it's going to mean that that vast rush distance that's really difficult to deal with is, a well, at the very least, a little bit shorter here. Missile truck's pretty much perfect for dealing with ticks. Yeah. The uh, missiles are heat-seeking, so they won't really miss the ticks, and they do a little bit of AoE. Not enough to really affect normal units, but against something as small as the tick, where they can take up a very minuscule amount of surface area. Yeah, those, uh, those, those rockets can be brutally effective here. Beamer turret was attempted, but not quite finished right now. And now there's a whole bunch of pawns getting ready to run across here. Not actually a whole lot of units to address all this. Uh, yeah, all the ticks had been sent across to try and harass Mighty Sheep over here. That does mean that there's basically nothing, and this could do a tremendous amount of damage. At least three metal extractors should go down right here. Uh, Elmer Fudd moving a whole bunch of pawns across. We have ten pawns here and some more reinforcing. Eventually, units are going to be trying to move across over here, and you can see units starting to build up in the back lines for Pro Randy. Got to be so careful not to lose these units in vain. Like, you, you really don't want to throw away as many of these units as possible. This might even be the right idea to just move them back at this point. Try and retreat with as many as you can. Just to try and not sacrifice as much metal to the uh, enemy team as possible here. Yeah, eventually these pawns are going to get cornered, and uh, it won't be long before their metal are belong to the blue. And, well, complicated little mess of a battle right there, but eventually all those pawns go down. Did even a single... I don't think a single uh, unit went down right there for Pro Solzer. All right, quite nice. Destroyers found a commander over here. Well, Destroyer found a commander over here. It's probably... Try and fight the commander. No reason why those depth charges shouldn't be firing away. I guess there is this uh, torpedo launcher up on the high ground here, although it's a technically a depth charge launcher. It's a little uh, semantics, semantics critique for you there. Brightening up your day with a little bit of semantics. Everybody loves it. <laughs> I know that's everybody's favorite thing to wake up to. A little bit of semantics. Chummer's over here. Some some reason that name just sounds wrong. Chummer's over here, building a forward vehicle bay. Uh, pretty much the same exact strategy that the Lost Dead Man went for. You can see the back line, basically reserved for economy over here. Going to be going for a whole bunch of wind turbines. Wind turbines make a lot of sense on this map. Uh, 17 metal total and uh, average wind speed of 12.7. Definitely makes a whole lot of sense to go into quite a few of those wind turbines on the back of this. That And there's also just so much space that you can fill up with wind turbines. It's one of the things that I love about this map is there's a lot of room for creativity, like literal physical space. Ah, the pincer as well as the guard pike for the Cortex players out there. Uh, very, very resistant to EMP. As you can see, it takes a tremendous amount of shurikens in order to shut this thing off. I don't know uh, what they put on this thing to make it so resistant to EMP, but it is incredibly, incredibly EMP proof. Looks like we have the EMP rework enabled as well, so things are going to slow down and come to a grinding halt before they uh, inevitably do get completely shut off here. Ooh, a little bit of a missed micro on that. It's funny, I was, I was talking to somebody about this, and I was thinking about it myself, how... Oftentimes I catch little random micro things like that, that even like even if I was playing the game, I never would have noticed that a, a res bot died right there. I would have just, you know, an, an hour later, I would have earned, well, maybe not an hour, five minutes later, I've been like, hey, didn't I have a res bot over here? And I never would have noticed. But with the privilege of the basically perfect vision from the uh, from the spectator's box, we can, we can see all that and I catch it sometimes. Have to take it with a grain of salt, right? Because a lot of those are such a minor thing that doesn't really change the course of the game, but it's uh, fun to take a look at and try and figure it out sometimes. A lot of recluses over here. Oh, this is... Okay, so this match was a little older. I didn't know it was this old, though. So this is before the update to the the console, or the newest update to the console. Um, as of today of recording this, the console has been updated so that it no longer even has the recluse. It has the Weber and the Sprinter. Uh, and that's all you get out of it, which I think is probably fair. Um, the Recluse was still very powerful as far as the siege weapon went. It was it was slightly less powerful than the Hound, but still exceedingly more powerful than, uh, say, for instance, the Termite for the uh, Cortex variant. Just the fact that it can fire away from such long range really made it a devastating unit on the field. And you can see it can certainly outrange a lot of these LLTs over here, which was kind of the biggest problem, was the fact that it, it was just too effective as a siege weapon. And uh, it meant that it was still not exactly a... Uh, fair strategy or it was deemed unfair a lot of the pro lobbies had a mod that turned it off and eventually the uh 
yeah, the, the console was just changed entirely to reflect that bar mostly balanced from the top down here. So what the pros are up to is pretty much what everybody else gets to work with. I say mostly because it's not always the case. For instance, the dragon change was not exactly, that was more of just like a community input <laughs> sort of a thing. Um, I believe it was, it was Fragnarok or Argon Wolf, one of those lovely modders, uh, which you can check out in the Brightworks Discord channel, by the way. There'll be a link to that down below in the description. You do see more and more recluses coming out. This is really uh, dating this replay here. I, I didn't check the date when I clicked on it. It just looked interesting. It looked very high level, and it looked like there was a, uh, looked like it lasted a good long while, so I figured I might as well take a wee gander, see what it was up to. But uh, yeah, it looks like might be a little, little ways back now. Quite the naval battle going on over here. We do have frigates engaging on multiple fronts here. We have frigates trying to push in on this northern side. This is a tricky one because how many forces do you dedicate to fighting their army and how many forces do you dedicate to harassing their their backline, right? You, you have to make a, a critical decision right now. And I think, well, it looks like at least for the time being, it's going to be four frigates over here. Wouldn't mind seeing those try and break the torpedo launchers. It might not be the worst idea to break those torpedo launchers and then just retreat off the line because it's going to force Preteric to reallocate some of his units back over to that side to try and deal with that. But if he reallocates units there and you pull your units quick enough, then you can actually, uh, yeah, engage on this side. Now, Preteric actually reading this differently here realizes, hey, if we uh, have units over there for the purple player, then it means that no units are over here and we can actually engage. It does actually manage to snipe a destroyer, so that's quite nice. Red Sub is under the water, though, and it's going to start putting that destroyer back up on top here. Oh, and this means that these frigates are going to have free reign to get all the way into the base here for the pink player. Very dangerous indeed. Amphibious tanks all over the place here. We have a couple of those uh, alligators, or sorry, salamanders, popping their heat ray heads out of the land here. But up on the, well, on the land, we have a bunch of recluses marching across. So this is going to be a uh, little bit of a I punch you, you punch me situation, and we'll just see who comes out on top. Yeah, these uh, recluses, man, they are powerful. Understandable that they were nerfed out of the game. It was a very, very effective strategy, as we can see well in a way here. Uh, frigates didn't do as much damage as I thought they would, actually. A nice little addressing here. We do have a whole bunch of these uh, shuriken paralyzing any of these as well, so that, at least for the time being, nothing is going to continue doing any damage. Although, we need to, we need to deal with this somehow. <laughs> we do have a death cavalry, so maybe we can... Uh, oh, there we go. Looks like they ate it up. Death Cavalry going to be built in order to try and deal with this. We do have another one coming across here, but yeah, the Shuriken are going to nullify it, so I'm not sure if I like that all too much. I think it's time to recuperate our losses and try and just rebuild some economy. Oh, at this point, the Rocket Spiders are just ravaging these T1 tanks. Oh, although we don't want to put them right next to it. Yeah, got to back those off a little bit here. Missile Truck's a vulnerable unit to the, uh, well, the Missile Spider here because the, uh, yeah, the, the Missile Trucks don't travel fast enough to dodge those rockets, and you know I say that while those Rocket Spiders still miss the vast majority of their rockets on those missile trucks right there. Nice hold right there for Chummers and Lost Dead, man. Pushing back the vast majority of those medium tanks, holding the lines right here. A couple of killer D-guns from Chummers, so all is well and good right now. We do have some Gunslingers coming up as well. Not going to be the end of the world, especially against these T1 medium tanks. They'll do quite a lot of work. You got to be careful against those Rocket Spiders. Those can definitely shut down Gunslingers if you don't micro them perfectly. Man. Recluse is all over the place. <laughs> you know it's a viable strategy when it's basically all the pros are using. Pro Solzer, speaking to that note, using a whole bunch of recluses over here. Although, well, ineffectively. Not not his fault, obviously, but the uh, recluses. Missing the vast majority of their rockets there. Barraging across over here. Rocket Spiders, also resistant to EMP. And especially so with the EMP rework, means that they're going to come up and up and running. Well, up to... They're going to undo the EMP very, very slowly here. A little bit of friendly fire there. I like these title generators. The title generators make a whole lot of sense. 20 title speed, just slightly less efficient than fusion reactors, which is pretty impressive. A couple of platypus over here blasting some of those title generators away, though. And it will, for the most part, be a win for Bro Randy here. Mighty Sheep quickly losing his line right now. No T2 up and available. He did start a fusion reactor, but he's now starting to uh, eat it back up again. There's also T2 coming up. T2 uh, metal extractors, that is. He already has two of them up and running, but not a third, surprisingly. Oh, that's okay. Weird. We have one. It's just, it's been resurrected and now it's handed to someone else and it's eating up all the metal. <laughs> a little bit of a complicated battle there. The battle for resources.
Chummers over here. Yeah, it looks like Mighty Sheep complaining about it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, now uh, Randy Sheep has a tremendous advantage here, has all the advanced metal extractors back here, going for a T2 lab up on the front lines here as well, and all the metal extractors up here as well, pumping out a tremendous amount of resources right now for the, uh, yeah, for the, the blue players, well, and specifically the green army to enjoy. Platypus here shooting down those shuriken. They have a little anti-air missile on their backpack, so they're able to do that. Not the end of the world here. For the green army that is now marching forward, slowly recovering from that EMP par paralys paral paralyzation. There we go. Oh, boy. Recording a whole bunch of these in a batch, and it uh, apparently is taking its toll. <laughs> Pitbull here firing away as much as he can. Pitbulls, I should say. Trying to do a whole bunch of damage here and doing a decent job. Blasting away some of those spiders, blasting away some of those uh, platypus that are in the way here, but eventually they will go down. These spiders are effectively a siege unit, so they're essentially designed to build or to uh, ravage those those static defenses here. One big burst of rocket damage, definitely enough to bring a lot of that down. The lab also gets blasted into splinters, and now the red player is uh, effectively out of this match. All the build power is very low right now. There's no energy in the bank we have 230 energy income it's going to mean that this pit bull does not come up for a good long while 14,000 energy for one of those bad boys so it takes a good good hot minute before that energy is going to be up and available right now for the red player looks like our yellow player jazz cash is trying to save the day right there but it's well it's a tricky battle gotta be careful ticks definitely do a lot of damage to rocket spiders because the friendly fire ooh, is immense <laughs> yeah you got to be very very careful with those Certainly a couple of ticks can convince those rocket spiders that they should friendly fire like crazy. Bunch of platypus rolling across over here. Lost dead man sensing a little bit of a, uh, a gap in his enemy's armor here. Trying to find it. Eh, some units were pulled to deal with these, but obviously the platypus can just retreat back onto the water where no unit can follow them. And uh, they'll be all good. Platypus actually fairly sturdy. R surprisingly sturdy. They look very flimsy, but they're not. They're, they actually have a surprising amount of health and uh, are often an excellent runaway unit because they can... They can survive most static defenses, and then they can usually uh, manage to break through whatever lines are established in the back. Usually they're not super, super uh, heavy. Sniping a bunch of metal extractors here. That's quite nice. Units being pulled right now from Zacruz trying to deal with all that. Rocket spiders on the front still causing a whole bunch of headache. Big old naval, in battle, naval engagement, naval battle concluded over here with the uh, purple player essentially on top right now. We don't have any res subs available, though. There are some of these platypus being sent across. This is really nice. Torpedo launchers, obviously... Uh, well, maybe not obviously. I say obviously, but it might not be obvious. Uh, torpedo launchers cannot attack hovercraft unit, and platypus are considered hovercraft. They kind of float along in their little feet things, feet appendages. <laughs> yeah, torpedo launchers have no effect against them, which makes them perfect for clearing out naval defenses like this, because uh, nothing, no, no torpedo launcher, which is usually the most effective naval defense, is ever going to be able to shut down any number of platypus. So it means that runbys like this can happen. And now we're seeing the purple player suddenly taking some heat where was that bombing oh it was down south okay yeah nicely done looks like with the assistance of some air superiority this side of the map will be conquered by the red teams the northern side oh actually a nice little pushback over here northern side recaptured right now by the uh, yellow forces the yellow grunts that were spammed out and sent up north to clean all that up a bunch of lts go down a bunch of anti-air goes down all things that can be uh, recovered here commander goes down that's a little bit more expensive and randy is moving in for the reclaim here grunts trying to defend that body but we have some resbots oh can the resbots get it oh the resbots might get it in time they're greedy boys and they can eat up quite a lot of metal pretty quickly oh, oh there we go 100 metal a second pretty good yeah, and you know what? Leaving only 300 metal behind, not the end of the world right there, and Randy's not going to reap the benefits of all of that wreckage. Nicely done. Rocket Spider's also making a significant appearance over here. Big old bomber run over here. Does manage to take out some of the economy in the back line over here. Popping a whole bunch of those wind turbines. Big old carpet bombing runs. Just trying to drop bombs in big vulnerable areas. Not any significant anti-air. Uh, I'm not seeing fighters. Looks like the blue player was on fighter duty. And it just uh, once you lose all your fighters, it's really difficult to get any more back up into the air. So anti-air turrets, anti-air units, all going to be much better at dealing with this at this point. Advanced geothermal is the target, but the res, uh, the uh, repair turrets, trying to keep it up and alive. And I think that's exactly the right idea. Eventually, these crossbows, the little T1 anti-air bots, going to be more than enough to shut off most of these guys. Bombers getting shot down by flak right here, and I think there's probably just not enough to deal critical damage over here. 
Oh, it was close. Got it down to 33%, but it had been healed by those construction turrets. Nice little bit of micro by Zacruz, keeping that alive and well, making sure that those bombers weren't going to be able to come back around for a second hit right there. I also see some anti-air flat coming out right here. This is one of the ways that the backline can always help the front, is just by building a tremendous, I mean, just a crippling amount of uh, flak vehicles and just putting them everywhere in every direction, because eventually they're going to find some aerial uh, engagement to shoot down, and it'll be well worth it. Your team will be happy for it. They might question your decisions in the moment, but they'll be very, very happy when those bombers start heading towards their base, only to be torn apart by the resounding crescendo of flak firepower ringing up into the air and filling the uh, skies with shrapnel and, well, destroyed planes. Nice to Mighty Sheep still staying in the game here. We have a T1 lab up and running now. We do have the T2 constructor, and there's also a pit bull over here. Commander goes down, by the way. A bunch of recluses stay that commander over on that side of the map. T1 economy coming up. I'm not sure how well this is going to do. We have some construction turrets, and we're trying to put some pit bulls up and together, so could be quite nice. Pit bulls obviously very powerful against any of these T1, but also the T2 here. Pit bull finally fires, revealing itself. It's cloaked otherwise. Yeah, there's the shuriken. Dissuading a whole lot of these from moving in again. Yeah, these pit bulls are pretty annoying to push into. Even if you manage to break them, they're going to do so much damage to your army anyways that it really feels like an a inefficient trade to try and kill those. Meanwhile, the purple player has completely won the naval field, and that does mean that Marauder are going to start running out here, dipping their toes in the water and getting their uh, hydrothermal power packs enabled so that they can uh, swim through the seas at high speed, making them very, very effective at, uh, well, harassing down some of these bases over here. We have Red Subs putting a commander back on its feet. I'd love to see some reclaim action as well. Getting a lot of that metal up and running. Uh, Long-range missile ships, obviously very powerful. Big old bomber run coming out here, but again, we have these flak trucks, and these are going to do excellently to shoot down any units that are trying to make their way through. One of the problems with losing this this uh, island here, losing the, the sea, is that these bombers and fighters, and basically anything, have a tremendous access directly into the back line here. These bombers are going to choose to go after the T2 lab right there. They do manage to blow it up. Can they get a second one is the question. Oh, flak truck doing a great job shooting down so many of those. And there you go. Flak trucks saving the day once again. Flak truck's probably one of the most efficient uh, anti-air that you can build just because of how many of you, you can produce out and how effective they are. For 470 metal, keep in mind that the uh, regular uh, anti-air anti, anti -air flak turret is 1,000 metal. It's a little bit better. It fires a little bit quicker and acquires targets a little bit better. But for uh, nearly half the price, you could just make two of them and problem is solved. Marauders coming out of the yellow player's base right now. Razorbacks, uh, well, Razorback, rather, has been handed over to Mighty Sheep. Just a little something-something to hold the line here. This little army of welders and sprinters and platypus, oh my. Not going to be nearly enough to break this line of T3. And, uh, yeah, all of that is going to be blasted apart right here by these yellow forces. Bunch of Marauders swimming their way across right now. They're trying to get some sort of an engagement. They'd probably love to kill this advanced geothermal. They'd probably love to kill this anti-nuke. There's a couple of really good targets, but it'll be a uh, it'll be questionable whether they'll actually be able to make it out there and do anything with it. Continual harassment on the southern side. I would love to see Chummers continually moving forward. We've got a dancing commander, everyone. Behold his sick moves. <laughs> We'll love to see these, uh, yeah, this area retaken here. Platypus shooting down whatever they can over here. Not bad. It looks like we do have the candidate units enabled. I guess I should have spotted that with the salamanders enabled, but we do have the nanos as well. Uh, printer, rather. It's a field engineer, so it can reclaim and repair and all that while moving, which makes it a pretty awesome little unit. In my opinion, I think they should have more range, but that's just because I think they would be awesomer, more awesomer with uh, a little bit more range. All right, Marauder of Made Beach. And they do find the advanced geo. Oh, nice save right there. So let me just explain what happened right there. The Marauder did manage to uh, jump on top of the advanced geo. They got it extremely low, but before they could kill it, the yellow player here, Jazz Cash, used his build power that was exploding all around me, or all around him, rather, and uh, managed to eat the geothermal before it got blown up, meaning that it didn't explode and take out the entire base over here. Absolutely fantastic little bit of micro right there. That's what I love to see. That's what the pros are so good at, is finding the cheeky little ways to make the very, very most out of 
seemingly unwinnable situations right there. And so all said and done, yeah, not a tremendous amount of damage was done here. Yeah, we have uh, effectively a whole bunch of metal and marauders that were taken down. Some wind turbines died and a couple of marauders died. Build power was lost as well as some energy converters, but all that can be rebuilt. The red team is definitely not suffering too hard for having lost all that. Shurikens accompanying the bombers instead of fighters this time. Interesting decision. Bombers dropping their payload right there. Ooh, ooh. Oh, not enough of them were charged right now. Oh no. Still not able to pop that advanced geo. Talk about a sturdy advanced geothermal right there. Able to withstand so much bombing, but still standing strong. Absolutely beautiful. Bulls over here causing a lot of pain. There is some T1 gunships up in the air, tickling them down to death slowly but surely. Commander goes down over here to the bulls, by the way. I mean, this is technically an efficient fight. It's a slow and tedious fight, but efficient. Couple of salamanders. Diving, diving, diving down into the deep to pop up where the uh, red team might be most vulnerable and actually they have a decent path of attack right now yeah lost dead man's in the way so could get a nice little d-gun if he's paying attention but otherwise yeah these salamanders are going to be essentially uncontested right here all the forces are leaking up north but hardly not hardly any of them are moving down south here so this is just free reign for a little bit of harassment meanwhile these bulls have been uh well on a war path there they go Trying to retreat back now. I think they should have just doubled down and gone for the kill here. This is a significant army. Re resurrected Razorback over here for Sulzer. Going to be the uh, capital capital ship. <laughs> the capital unit of this little congregation of forces here. Tex pushing in against Welders. That's not exactly efficient. Welders obviously very good against Tex with their chain lightning. And this is a really killer push right here. We have a whole bunch of, uh, well, Razorbacks as well as a bunch of Lightning Tanks all working together right now. Coming out from Shimon or Shaman or Shamoon, where it's pronounced. <laughs> all of which starting to move their way across right here. There's no commander to degun them, so this is going to be a very, very difficult one to hold. There's a lot of Pipples, so maybe the Pipples are going to be able to put down one or maybe two of those Razorbacks, but it's not going to be a... Uh, it's going to be bad looks as soon as those Razorbacks start to hit the red line right here. Shuriken are pulled. Probably a decent option. Oh, well, they're not pulled all the way. Salamanders do finally make land over here. Lost Deadman decided to spare the commander and move it out of the way. Salamander is going to continue ravaging into the base. Pitbulls finally engage over here. Uh, and you can see they do a decent amount of damage, but those Razorbacks do a whole hell of a lot more. Oh, and down goes the entire base for the red player. And indeed, looks like uh, Mighty Sheep has decided to tap out at this point. Realizes there's not much point in staying in this game. And uh, there's... there. Well, there goes the entire base. One Razorback down, but after everything has already been dismantled here. Just brutal. The lone pit bull stands. Yeah, that's the real power of the Razorbacks. They're able to shoot that anti-air, or well, rather, the re they, they effectively are anti-air. They can shoot their lasers up into the sky and blast planes down. Pretty sci-fi if I ever heard of, heard of any. There goes the base for Jazz Cash as well. What an excellent little push right there. Yeah. Green player realizing if he just builds up enough T3, he's going to be able to swipe through here in one fell swoop. Oh, Razorback's not targeting the Shuriken right here, and so they will eventually be paralyzed. Slowly but surely here, and eventually those are dealt with, but not before they manage to wipe out one, two, and three bases completely off the map here for the red team. Marauders trying to make something happen over here, though. A little bit of a base trade happening as these Marauders are now sweeping through the wind turbine fields. Also have a significant amount of forces over here on this side. Would love to see these try and get something done. Bombers to deal with Razorbacks. What a day. <laughs> there we go. Finally, the Razorback is bombed into oblivion right there. Shuriken makes short work of it. And uh, yeah, with the EMP rework, I guess it does make the Shuriken a little bit better at paralyzing these. But these Razorbacks have substantially hindered the forces right now for the, uh, for the well, the red players in, in all respects. Significant portions of the economy have been ruined here. 
just by tribute of how many of these uh, bases have gone down to the Razorbacks, how many advanced metal extractors have gone down, how many of everything have gone down. Marauder now running through here, and there's just no way for the red team to stop this tide of forces now moving through. Reinforcing Razorbacks just used to clean up the mess of forces coming out from the, uh, the pink and the orange player here. But it's only a matter of time before this backline completely crumbles. Pyrotech even in a little bit of trouble. Commander goes down right next to the fusion reactor, meaning that all is lost for the maroon player. Not but the bombers in the sky remain for the maroon forces of Pyrotech here. A big cloud of whirlwinds. It's quite a funny, uh, funny solution to this runaway problem. <laughs> I appreciate that we're trying anything here. Any trying something is better than trying nothing. This Razorback is still full health, and now it's in the back line right here for Lost Dead Man. And I can't, can't fault them for tapping out at that point. The blue team overwhelming with the Marauder spam now leaking through, and there was nothing that they could have done to hold on any tighter here. The push was valiant through the southern side, but just not fast enough. Not enough damage was done, and it looks like the green team going to be able to, well, the blue team rather, <laughs> but specifically the green players here, making tremendous effect and able to snatch victory in this game if you enjoyed this game you can always show your support by hitting the like button down below i uh, know i have to ask every time but it is it does really change the numbers and i appreciate it every single time so you guys know i appreciate you but other than that i hope you enjoyed today's video and i will see you in the very next beyond all reason content see you later folks